Hello folks, today we're going to be looking at a simple diagnostic tool that will help you to determine whether the person in your life that you're dealing with actually would have NPD or not. The reason for doing this is when I ran a poll recently of followers of mine who were using the term narcissist and were saying, oh my ex boss is a narcissist or my mother-in-law is a narcissist. When I asked them, how many of you know what the nine traits from the DSM definition of cluster B, narcissistic personality disorder, do you know? Over 90% of them couldn't name three. Now, what does this mean? It means that we're using the word narcissist to mean essentially whatever we want it to mean, and that's no good. So let me help you. I think what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to define three categories. One is a category in which there is it's not the case that your partner has narcissistic personality disorder in any meaningful way. The second category would be that you're dealing with a person who has highly narcissistic defenses or highly narcissistic interrelational style. And then the third category is going to be somebody who we could say probably would get a clinical diagnosis that would be offered under controlled conditions by a qualified con uh, clinician, which I am not and neither are you. Um, that they probably would get the diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. There are problems with the definition in the DSM. There are problems with the testing process. If we want to have a debate about that, I suggest we do it in a different video. This is just to give people something that gives them a little bit more precision and a little bit more validity to when they want to know, like, is what I'm dealing with narcissistic personality disorder? And does this mean that my partner is a narcissist? So the rating scale for this is you either answer no, which is one point. I don't know or not really, which is two points or yes, definitely, which is three points per trait. So the first trait we're going to look at is a grandiose sense of self importance. So is the person you're thinking of, do they display a grandiose sense of their own self-importance. Are they very grandiose? Do they put themselves first all the time? Is there a sort of a, a fictional quality to the way in which they lionize and eulogize their own lives, their own existence? If the answer is no, put one. If maybe, kind of, then you score two. If it's yes, definitely, then you score three. The second trait that we would be looking for is an ongoing preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or idealized love. So is the person you're thinking of highly preoccupied with fantasies of success, power, beauty, or idealized love? And your answer will either be no, kind of, or yes, definitely. And that's how you score them. The third trait that we're going to be looking at is, does the person believe that they are special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions? Is the person you're thinking of obsessed with the idea that they're unique, that the norm is not for them? They can only be involved with other high status people or associated with high status institutions. Your answer should be either no, kind of, or yes, absolutely. The fourth trait that we're going to be looking at is do they require an excessive amount of admiration? Have you noticed the person you're thinking of provoking, bullying, manipulating other people in scenarios such that they get a huge amount of admiration, adulation, fawning praise? Do they need to be the winner? Do they need to be congratulated for everything that they've done? Do they pout and go into a negative emotional cycle if they don't get that? So do they seem to require an excessive amount of admiration? Your answer, again, will either be no, kind of, or yes, definitely. The fifth trait that we'll be looking for, does this person display a huge sense of entitlement? Are they a very entitled human being? What does that mean? It's an unreasonable expectation of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with their expectations. Does this person display a huge amount of this entitlement? Either the answer is no, it's kind of, or it's yes, 
definitely. Please keep your score. The sixth trait that a clinician would look for would be being interpersonally exploitative. So does this person take advantage of others to achieve their own ends? The seventh would be that they lack empathy. They're unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. They just don't seem to care. They behave in a very cruel and callous way. And when you point out that they're hurting you or they're hurting other people in the environment, they're just completely indifferent. They do not care. The eighth trait that a clinician would look for that we're looking for here is that are they often envious of others? Are they just riddled with jealousy and envy for other people's achievements and other people's status? And do they also believe that other people are very envious of them? So this means that you would observe over time, they're actually extremely envious of what other people have and what other people are doing. But what they feed back to you frequently is, oh, everybody's envious of me. Everybody's extremely jealous of me and my achievements. The ninth and final trait that we are looking for is showing arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes? Do they talk down to people? Are they bullying? Are they dismissive? Do they clearly demonstrate they see themselves as being above people in the environment? You will score this either no, maybe, or yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's look at the scores. The minimum that you can score is nine. If you scored nine, it is not meaningful for you to be talking about this person as though they have narcissistic personality disorder. If you're in the medium range of nine to 18, and you're saying maybe, you're like maybe, 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 to some of the answers to these questions, then perhaps let's suggest that what you're looking at is a person who's not very considerate, a bit arrogant, a bit self-centered, lacking in empathy, a bit annoying, and maybe on some issues in certain contexts has a what they call a narcissistic style. Sometimes it's called low-grade narcissism. I personally don't think it's useful. This is me. Other psychologists would absolutely disagree with me. I don't particularly like the concept of low-grade narcissism. I don't particularly like the idea of blurring the boundaries between a narcissistic style because you can psychoeducate somebody, you can train them out of that and blurring that with narcissistic personality disorder. But then I'm a bit of an absolutist. It's my personality. I like strong boundaries between definitions. And a lot of people in psychology, uh, they, don't, they don't agree with me. So fine. If you're scoring between nine and 18, you can say this person has a highly narcissistic style and you'll probably find it's in specific contexts and, and with specific people. When we get to 18 to 27, then we are in range for a potential clinical diagnosis, a meaningful clinical diagnosis for narcissistic personality disorder. Once you trip past 23, once you get past 23, then um, I would say you're probably justified in saying something like, I believe if this person received a clinical test and answered the test questions honestly, they would probably get narcissistic personality disorder. So if you scored nine, which is the minimum, no. Um, it's not meaningful to refer to this person as a narcissist. Nine to 18, Low-grade narcissism, if you like that term, I would prefer if you said a highly narcissistic interrelational style and then try and find out in which context in which people that's taking place, that can be trained out of a person. 18 to 27, that person is a problem. And once you get to 23 and up, we're looking at there's a chance that this person could receive a clinical diagnosis for narcissistic personality disorder. And once you get into that range, there really isn't much hope to train that out of them or that some sort of educational process is really gonna help. Final point that I wanna to add to this video. If you're here because you wanna know whether the problem is you or them, and if you're here because you wanna know whether it's time to terminate a relationship or not, that's an adjacent but separate issue. This is a video to help people to determine whether we're really functionally talking about the psychiatric clinical entity called narcissistic personality disorder, or we're just saying narcissist to mean anyone who frustrated me. If you want a video um, and some sort of a diagnostic tool to let you know whether the problem is you or them, or whether it's time to leave a relationship or not, just let me know in the comments and I'll do that for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that that was useful and I look forward to speaking to you again next time. Thank you for your time and for your attention.
If you believe that you have been involved in a narcissistically abusive relationship, either within your family, within your workplace, or within a romantic relationship, I have a course for you. It's called Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse, and it's available from richardgrannon.com now. Thank you.